Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash just no mill. In today's episode. My mom is giving me the silent treatment for now 3 days after I, 20 am, told her I plan on moving out after college. Not wanting my MIL to come with my holiday overseas. Little brother's wedding. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. My mom is giving me the silent treatment for now 3 days after I, 20 am, told her I plan on moving out after college. My mother has this warped plan of me living with her in a house for all of my life and told me I would pay a portion of the mortgage monthly. This was the fifth time she brought it up out of nowhere, and frankly I was tired of hearing it. I told her calmly sorry, but I don't really intend on doing that. She got really upset and started accusing me of abandoning her and how could I do such a thing when she's paying for my education. I didn't know what to say but I stood my ground and explained to her that I plan to live on my own after I graduate, in roughly three years, and have some money saved. Then she started threatening me and said well if you're going to leave me in a few years, why don't I just leave you right now, who's going to pay for the rent then? We live in an apartment. I didn't know how to respond to that, so I kept my mouth shut. Since then, she's been ignoring me, eating meals in her own room, and just giving me attitude overall. I feel worthless, confused, angry, hopeless and a piece of shit, but at the same time I don't think I said anything wrong, I don't have any siblings or family members that I could confide with. I feel lost. Can anybody spare me some advice on how to move forward? She has been grooming you your entire life to be under her control until she dies. She sees that unraveling and is trying to manipulate into feeling, in your own words, worthless, confused, angry, hopeless and a piece of shit. She is doing this intentionally to try to guilt you into staying. Your self-worth cannot be tied to your mother's love and approval. That is a very unhealthy, but very common, relationship dynamic. Yup, this is exactly what I'm thinking. I just don't understand how parents can act like this towards their own children. I'm really upset. I wish I could start over again. Your self-worth cannot be tied to your mother's love and approval. And another piece of my puzzle fits. Don't fall for her manipulation. Adult move out. That is part of growing up. You are supposed to spread your wings and fly. My mom did this. When I told her I was leaving to college she gave me the silent treatment and refused to acknowledge I was in the room for like a month. She went to the family and had everyone try to guilt me into staying. A few days before I was supposed to leave I guess my dad talked to her and told her to knock it off. I get our parents don't want us to grow up but at some point you have to do what's best for you. You're allowed to grow up into an adult. You're allowed to become independent even if it makes her mad and sad. I mean she left her parents' house why can't you? You are feeling the way she wants you to feel. Think on that for a moment. She is causing the problems. A parent should pay for their kids to grow and learn and then the parent should expect the kid to fly free. Your mom is making the consequences of her bad decision making and poor planning your problem. Do as she suggests and move out now. She will need to deal with it. At least you will no longer be being emotionally manipulated and bullied. You need to remove yourself from your mother's space ASAP. It's really the only way to save your mental health. I'm sorry she's doing this to you. As a parent myself I'm honestly disgusted by her behavior and treatment of you. Good luck sweetie X. Advice is to stop telling her you're planning on moving out from now on, you've told her once and you can tell her again when you're in a position to actually move. Just grey rock and change the subject if she brings it up again. Yes. Put her on an information diet. Stop sharing your plans. Get through college and get your degree. I feel lost. Of course you do. 
Your mother, whom you love, just used emotional blackmail on you. It's enough to confuse anyone. The only advice I can give is stick to your plan, pay whatever you agreed to pay for now, and focus on your school. Other people here will certainly give you a more full answer. Good luck. Your mother has raised you to feel worthless, confused, angry, hopeless, and a piece of shit. Don't let her get the better of you. The duty of parents is to prepare their kids for adult life, not to raise many knees that they train to be their servants, comfort animals, and lifelong housemates. Can you start stretching the leash now by transferring to a school farther away so you'd have to live there? While finishing school, you'd be establishing yourself in a new town, working there or at least learning of job opportunities, meeting new friends and maybe romantic partners, and giving both you and mom time to get used to being apart. When you graduate, you'll be in a better position to actually cut the cord. Keep telling yourself, I am NTA and I am not Norman Bates. Good luck starting your adult life. Not wanting my MIL to come with my holiday overseas. I was wondering if I was overacting slash overthinking to what had been discussed with my husband and IELTS about my holiday to visit my family overseas. A bit of background, all of my family live in overseas. I have lived here for 16 years since I married with my husband and up until COVID I used to go back to my home country about once a year. The last visit was three years ago, during this time I have lost several of my family members however I could not visit them due to the travel restrictions. So I actually love my ILs. Especially MIL. She has been always supportive and respectful to me and my husband, and I wouldn't have survived COVID time without her support since we have three young children and my husband work away all the time, he is away about a half of a month. When my oldest was two, me and MIL visited my family and spent a week and half over there. I would have traveled alone with my two years old if she didn't come, and at that time I felt it was very helpful. We had a great time. In April May next year, my youngest brother is getting married and requested my little family of five to be there. Unfortunately for my husband he just got a new job at a new place so it does not look like he will have enough paid leave to Taka a holiday. Also, the price for our flight is more expensive than before COVID time, so it wasn't realistic for five people to go there at this stage. I and husband talked about it and it's actually realistic if I go solo for a week or maybe take my oldest if the wedding is happening during the school holiday. My husband is happy to, and can afford to take some days off to look after other two children while we go, but he said he requires his mom and dad to take care of them when he has to go to work. Last night, as my husband was away I invited my ILs to the dinner. At the after-dinner chat if IL brought up that maybe I and MIL visit my family together and take all of my children with us, since my parents haven't seen my youngest due to the travel restrictions. Unlike last time we traveled together, my initial thought was at N.O. Because while I enjoyed my visit to my family with MIL last time, I felt exhausted dealing with all the language barriers between my family and MIL, also simply spending every single day with MIL nonstop for a week and a half. This time, I will have three young children with me and I cannot imagine myself being comfortable traveling a long haul with my MIL. As soon as we arrive at my home country MIL will need lots of assistance because of the language barrier. Like organizing domestic travels and explaining my cultures to her and being a translator etc. I don't know if you know this but these kind of things uses a lot of brain and mentally quite exhausting. I used to work as a part-time translator and I still feel like this. I won't be able to meet up with my friend without Mayel because I just cannot leave her alone in a places where she isn't familiar with. What my IELs don't seem to understand is that I wasn't planning this trip to be a holiday which it was more like at the last time, it will be just a family catch-up and I wasn't planning to spend extra dollar on anything except to attend my brother's wedding. I told my IELs I haven't decided anything yet. I said it's all up to how much we can afford for this trip. But at that time I felt terrible if I had to say no to this. T Tonight I had a chance to talk to my husband about it, and he said he understood where I come from but it might be MIL's last chance to go overseas, since she isn't that young. 
He also said it is an adult thing to look after someone and me not wanting to look after someone isn't a better reason for rejecting the idea than just me saying I don't want it just because, which I am a little confused. It's not that I don't want to look after anyone, it's just I am not comfortable putting myself into a situation where I could potentially be under a lot of stress because I cannot look after my kids with someone I can feel 100% myself. My MIL is lovely, supportive, and non-judgmental at all, but she isn't a total replacement of my husband if you know what I mean. But I believe my husband just told me to grow up, suck it up and take my L with me, am I right? I'm starting to feel maybe I'm overthinking about this. Maybe if this plan doesn't work out for me then, it's better just not go at all. Maybe I shouldn't go anyway because it means I have to leave my children for a week and that makes a bad mother. I thought about this way too much to the point I couldn't sleep. Edit, I came to a realization that this problem is more about my so, not my L. I'm quite confident she will totally be okay with me saying no. This makes my topic not really suitable for this subreddit, is it? Would it be okay if I keep the discussion just because it has been very helpful to clear things up for me? Edit 2. I had a chance to talk to my parents about this trip and they were like, is there any way you can bring all your kids, if money is the problem we would like to help? I explained my husband can't be with me and they came up with this idea oh, what if you ask your MIL to assist you? We would like to see her too. And I explained my struggle and got labeled I was being selfish. Why not? She will help you, we can see our grandkids, she can experience the culture and it's a win-win. But is it? Where is my benefit in doing that? I understand how much they wanted to see their grandkids. I want that to happen too. At least after I explained everything my mom understood me, from the perspective of being put into the situation to look after kids and IL in a foreign country. OMG your husband used the old guilt trip of it being her last trip before she dies? Nope. Tell your husband if she needs a last trip before she dies she should go with her husband. This. Your DH is quite rude to tell you to suck it up and take his mom. If he wants her to go overseas, he and his dad can plan it. Thank you everyone, OP here. I'm overwhelmed with the warm feeling you gave me with all the supportive comments. I was crying and smiling while I was reading the thread. Thank you for making me realize it is not selfish for me wanting to go there without my L. And reassuring it is okay to leave my children to the hands of a perfectly capable husband's care. I also realized that before I was failing to notice I was actually quite homesick. I really don't mind taking and showing around my ILs to my home country and acting like a tour guide but this trip isn't it. This trip is really about me, my family, my brother and his wife. I'm quite sure they will understand and won't make this as much of a drama. Also you guys taught me many valid reasons and ways to phrase what and how I want to approach this to them thumbs up. I th think my husband is a little bit jealous cause he cannot go in his defense he and my brother are close and he works hard and he does deserve a holiday. However, while I was reading your comments I realized that if my husband and I else want to visit my family then we can organize this some other time. We can all go together. Then my husband can look after his parents, it's fair since I was the one who toured around his mom last time. Come to think of it, I think this was not in my else, but the problem of so. I'm sure we will be able to talk this through, and I am confident I can be firm and strong. Well it's a bedtime where I live, so I quickly wrote this to reply to everyone. Thank you truly, and will be updated if anyone is interested in hearing my update. If you're not wanting to hurt Mill's feelings, I just say that you've decided to go on your own this time, so you can save money and really soak up the time with your fam. But you'd love to plan another trip when your husband, kids, and possibly IELs can all go together. So can travel with his mom, it's not your responsibility to make sure she travels while she is able. Thank you. I think this is perfectly worded and a good English lesson for me. Being an ESL my problem is that sometimes I only know how to say things quite directly, 
which may sound rude. On the contrary to my husband, I think he needs a lesson. I'm kinda amazed that he cannot see my perspective after all this time together. If your FIL, MIL, and DH are all eager for your MIL to have a vacation abroad, they should plan one for her instead of volunteering you as her tour guide and interpreter during your trip to attend your brother's wedding. It's convenient so DH and FIL don't have to plan or actually do anything. Your MIL's last chance to go overseas should be about her, not about your family time, so this trip isn't appropriate for that purpose. His argument is invalid on that basis alone. And you shouldn't be acting as a tour guide during your brother's wedding, that is a lot more than just because. Also, leaving your children for a week does not make you a bad mother. They will be just fine. It does sound like your husband told you to suck it up and take his mother. Tell him no. Tell her no, and use the reason that an overseas vacation should be a vacation for her, not her sitting around watching while you hang out with your family speaking a language she doesn't understand. She will be bored and unhappy, and you want something better for her that this trip just won't provide. Tell DH it's a no then. Doesn't matter the reason and I'm not inviting your mom to the homes of my relatives uninvited. I love your parents, DH, but they don't get to invite themselves on trips to visit my parents. Your husband is coming up with a lot of ideas to get out of parenting alone while expecting you to, isn't he? Yup. Thought the same thing. What's beyond me is that I do solo parenting literally all the time, as his work requires to be away from home quite often. I wouldn't lie, I felt a little unfair when I talked about this with him and he said looking after someone is an adult thing to do. Opie, your husband is guilting you so you will take all of the kids if she goes and he will get a quiet staycation. You are not going on a holiday, it's for a wedding and if your family haven't met your youngest too then Emil definitely doesn't need to be there and take away time from your family with them. Also, you having to translate everything is actual work. And you are not responsible for giving Mil her maybe final trip overseas. Little Brother's Wedding Mom has spent my entire life violating my boundaries, sometimes in very gross ways, then shaming me for reacting negatively. In my adulthood I have volleyed between NC and LC and right now have some contact because I have young children and I'm not sure how to moderate her relationship with them. I have two older brothers, B and C, and one younger brother, A. A is getting married at the end of this month and DH and I are driving from out of state with LOs to spend the week with the family. We decided to set aside one whole day for my mother, divorced, remarried, and currently nastily divorcing my stepdad, and one whole day with my father, divorced and remarried. I texted my mother about this plan and didn't hear anything until the next day when my older brother B texted the sibling group chat to say that mom deserves more time with Elos and me because she's going through a rough time right now with the divorce and my dad has step-grandchildren he spends time with. What? The. F. I am shocked that B signed off on the idea of mom getting more time with my kids because dad has other little kids in his life he is generally very emotionally intelligent and that logic is just screwy. I, I had a phone call with mom where she tried to tell me she would see us Tuesday night, at A's house, no less, something he has said was not going to happen, but I guess she thought she could convince me and then he wouldn't have a choice, as well as all day Wednesday. I reiterated that we would only be spending one day with her, I had to dig deep within myself to be firm and DH was beside me for support. She was pretty angry. She didn't respond directly to what I said, but her tone of voice changed to icy. A, a few days ago mom wanted to drop something off at Ace house while he was out of the state. When he told her to wait until he got back she said she was going to do it anyway and when he called her to tell her absolutely not, her only response was, have a good day, bye. He got his neighbor to go to the house and lock all the doors just in case she showed up. I didn't hear the conclusion, but I don't think she did. I knew she would find a way to punish him and today she made a Facebook post talking about how B, C, and I would be in our hometown soon to spread her mother's ashes. No mention of A or his wedding at all.
I hadn't heard about plans to spread grandma's ashes until this. I am so thankful A has her blocked on social media. I debated sending a screenshot to him but it wouldn't be productive in any way and could only hurt him, and he is stressed out enough with her leading up to his big event. I think he is on the verge of uninviting her, he had to uninvite our stepdad, he didn't want to, because he was worried what she might do at the wedding if he was there. A, and I have just in the past few years started repairing our relationship. It was destroyed in our childhood by my mother flip-flopping the two of us between golden child and scapegoat, which caused a lot of resentment toward each other. Now we are understanding that the blame was misplaced and we are bonding a lot, especially as we navigate mom's moods and manipulation together. B is either a flying monkey or completely clueless. C is neutral. I had a frank conversation on the phone with him and he recognizes that while he has a positive relationship with mom, A and I don't, and he has agreed to keep her out of our hair as much as possible and not tell her anything we don't approve. I trust that he means it. DH has been incredible through this whole ordeal, helping me stand up to my mom and supporting me in my decisions, and most of all reassuring me that I'm not crazy. My plan is to spend the one day with her so she can see her grandchildren, hope that she will tamp down the crazy with B and C there, and stick to only seeing her that day and at the wedding. I'm going to be blunt, your reason for re-establishing contact with her is completely backwards. You need to protect your kids from harmful environments. She needs to be able to have a healthy relationship with you before you let her have one with your kids. She will not treat them better than she treated you. I'm sorry. And you may get flack from your family for keeping, protecting, your kids from her and I'm sorry for that too. But they are your kids, not theirs. They can go make a baby and give it to their mom if they want to please her so badly. Tell your brother your kids are not emotional support animals for a bad divorce. Don't engage in arguments with them, just say your relationship with your mom is different than theirs and you don't expect them to understand but you expect them to respect you. Also you said they don't have kids yet so I play that card you'll understand when you have a child. If she keeps acting up tell her she won't even get her one allocated day. Also, you can cancel it the day of. Plans change all the time. Good luck. I hope it is a beautiful wedding. Want to make a bet that the ashes spreading will be on the day you are seeing your dad? Oh no, I didn't even consider that. I assumed that she would schedule it for the day we see her, but that is too rational. That's going to be tough to deal with. Absolutely guaranteed. No bet taking on that one. I would just not go. The grandma is gone and she can remember her in her own way privately and avoid the drama. I want you to have this resource. Remember, it is okay to say no. It is okay to let her be upset. It is okay to change your mind and leave if she cannot control herself. Always have your exit strategy. Even if it is just loading up Ellos and go for ice cream while you wait for her to leave the house you are staying in. Me and so have a non-verbal signal that means get me out of here. Ours is an upper arm squeeze and tugging of left ear. It makes me feel better slash safer knowing I can signal and be whisked out. That makes me better able to put my JN mother on medium chill and keep calm. If possible, I'd schedule the time with her to last, so she can't try to squeeze in a second day, not that it will stop her from trying, but it leaves you with we can talk about that on X day, we'll see you then, remember, and make you look good for setting aside time for her, too. She's so manipulative and shameless about it. That stunt with A's house was a straight-up power struggle. You're lucky that you and sibling A are a team in this, I know from experience that it's not easy when other siblings are still in the FOG. Some of my siblings were still spouting propaganda about how my mother was a saint for a long time into our adulthood.
Yes, having Ada talk to about things has really helped me see how she has shaped my life and understand that a lot of what she did and does is not normal. If I only had B and C to talk to I would probably still be in the FOG. And I know exactly what you mean about propaganda, it's just gross. Can we just go back to the part where your brother leaves the state without locking the doors to his house? It's a rural community where everyone knows each other. It's just the culture there. Honestly, and I say this as someone who is also currently planning a wedding, if having your stepdad there would make a, and their partner, more happy than having your mother there, then it's pretty clear who needs to be uninvited to the wedding. A lot of people, probably including your her, will say that I will regret this down the line, but, at least in my case, I realized that I would regret having people that would poison the atmosphere with their drama way more than I would regret not inviting a family member. I agree with you about uninviting her and inviting our stepdad, but I think A is worried about the potential explosion that could happen if she decides to show up anyway or something like that. Also he reached out to B for advice before making the decision. Even though I told him B was going to advocate for appeasing mom and uninviting our stepdad. Info, you said you have contact now because you have children. Why would that make a difference? Not trying to be snarky, truly. If you made it to the end of the video, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share and we will see you in the next video.